Next on BYUSN, BYU football drops their first game of the season to Kansas. So what are our top takeaways from that setback? And is BYU's run game salvageable at this point? ESPN's Trevor Maddich answers that and joins us to discuss much more. Plus the latest in the league in the Big 12 roundup. Did I finally win one in that or prop picks? And is tonight's women's soccer game at Texas already a must win for Big 12 title? Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Monday, September 25th, I am Spencer Linton, alongside one of the biggest Swifties I know, Jerem Jordan. But it's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. It's me. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I would go to the concert. I don't know if I would say I'm a Swiftie, but uh, Taylor Swift was at the Chiefs game. Certainly some... I wonder who she was there to watch. Travis, Ke She was there to watch Andy Reid um, and his team. But Travis Kelsey, I heard, was also there. Um, so Andy Reid was asked after the game about this and said he was the one that set them up. Andy Reid gives off, like, amazing YSA Bishop vibes to me. <laughs> like, setting – yeah, I set them up. There you go, which is uh, pretty Matchmaker, awesome. matchmaker, make me a match. Yeah, and uh, Baker's going to bake, as uh, Taylor has uh, opined. So, yeah, uh, you know, that was the big news yesterday. It wasn't any football. It wasn't Dolphins putting up 70. It was <gasps> Taylor Swift went to the it's Chiefs amazing. game. It's amazing. <laughs> she almost went to the BYU Kansas game. No, just kidding. And to that, I'm I got nothing. I'm, I'm a blank space. All rise you. and shout! Look at you. It's time for one anchor stream. boy. Get on to the next one. Learn from this. Get better. I know that we have a good team. I know that we haven't played our best yet. I'm looking forward to doing that next week. What's trending presented by BYU that Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. I was uh, standing right in front of them when they were doing that. We don't want to do this, but we're doing it. Oh, that. man. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough. <sighs> to BYU's credit, they show up for the fans even when they yeah, lose. Absolutely. And they show their appreciation. It's hard to get jacked in the yeah. moment once you just lost. Yeah. And gosh dang it, Jerem, Kansas covered. Kansas beats BYU 38-27. They kicked that late field goal just to spite us. Yeah, just two, to spite us. Yeah, to go up two scores. Uh, a lot more goes into that game, uh, obviously. Yeah. Uh, there are so many obvious takeaways. Two defensive touchdowns. BYU minus three in the turnover margin. Can't get the run game going. An 11-point loss to open up Big 12 play. Jerem, what are your biggest takeaways from BYU set back to Kansas in Lawrence? Let's just get the no-duh ones out of the way. Minus uh, 21 points off turnovers is tough. 14 direct on the uh, scoop and score and the pick six. Those yeah. were hard. Uh, beginning of halves. Uh, momentum swings there. That was tough, uh, tough obviously. Um, but the defense can take it away, too. Like, the BYU defense uh, didn't have a takeaway for the first game this season. They had seven and three. That was yeah. top ten nationally, which was great. Zero takeaways. Uh, you get a takeaway in this thing when it's a one-score game in the second half in spite of those two things and three turnovers. Uh, maybe it's a different game. Obviously, running the ball is interesting. I'm very interested in watching Coordinator's Corner, as I always am. I love that show. Big fan. Um, and It's across the studio here. Is And you're hosting today uh, with Greg at Texas. Is uh, our team stacking the box and letting BYU throw like they were in the Southern Utah game, or is it just – just massive ineffectiveness. Obviously, nine yards listed. Let's talk about the gain there. It was 44 gain. There were 35 lost with Parker Kingston and Keaton Slovis and so on. So, But even then, 44 gained on 16 carries is 2.8 yards per carry. What, what's happening? The success rate for BYU, that is to get 40% of the yards on first down, 50% of what's on second down, and 100, is not good. Is not good at all. More on that in a moment. And then here's the other thing. In spite of all of this, BYU's still in the game, man. Yes. Keaton Slovis is making the – after the after the pick six, which is super weird bounce off of Isaac Rex, another guy, Kansas pick six, that one was just lucky. 50-yard bomb to Chase Roberts. Like, BYU is not going down easy and had a chance here. The defense still had an opportunity to give BYU possession to go tie it. Down one, 10 uh, – sorry, down eight, right, 10-58 yeah. left. After the pick that Keaton threw the, the second yes. reception. Yes, in the second half – uh, Kansas offense rushed the ball really well. They only got to third down five times. They were getting first downs on first and second. Kansas was four of five, and on third and five of the Kansas 40, 6 10 left, down eight, dropped eight. Daniels runs. Camden Garrett has a chance to make a tackle short, 
and, and force a punt and unfortunately misses. That was one of several plays where BYU did not get it done. Um, dirty eyes a couple times. One guy playing man, other playing zone. So that, that was tough. In the second half, 25 rushes for 6.9 yards per carry. Only four passes by Kansas in the entire second half and two were for touchdowns. So I, I would submit that in spite of everything, BYU still had a chance in this. And certainly, uh, you know, the offense uh, d didn't help at times with those three turnovers and the two that led directly to scores. But the defense could have, one, got a takeaway, or two, got another stop. The only stop they got was when it was predictably run and then a field goal was made to push it to two scores and the game was basically over. Let's listen to Kalani Satake address the impact of what we've been discussing, the turnovers right here. Definitely take care of the football. It's hard when you give a, a pick six for a touchdown and then a fumble return for a touchdown. That's hard on our defense and hard on the morale of the team. I don't, I don't want to blame it on the offense, but we, we pride ourselves on taking care of the football. So we got to take care of the football on offense and then on defense, got to find ways to create havoc and get some, get, get some turnovers ourselves. We didn't, do, we didn't do enough as a team. It's a complete team loss. Well, that pretty much sums up what we were just talking about All right, let's right go to here. Break. Yeah, Kalani summarized it beautifully, really. And as painful as it is, you take away one of those defensive touchdowns, just one. Because remember, BYU sustained the first defensive touchdown when Parker Kingston got hit in the chin. By the way, he's okay. I talked to his dad uh, on my travels yesterday. Parker should be back for next week, so he's okay. Yeah. But they sustain that and build a halftime lead. They're up 17 to 14, and BYU gets yeah. the ball coming out of the locker room in spite of that defensive touchdown. Yeah. And the defense, they got a fourth down stop in the first half. Mm -hmm. You know, they did some good things. Yeah. BYU had the momentum going into the halftime locker room for sure. And then the energy, for whatever reason, wasn't great coming out of the locker room. People were pointing to some conservative play calling, Kansas making some nice adjustments. And then Isaac Rex, the postgame, said, it was my fault. I, I shouldn't have tipped up the pass. So he, he took full accountability He's trying to make there. a play. Right? I, I, if he doesn't go for it at all, that's worse than the tipping it accidentally off of another guy to another guy. Yeah. By the way, the first throw should have been picked should have been, off. Should have been a pick and six, it wasn't. right? There were a couple of those from Keaton Slopes. He was really good in this game, but there were four or five where it was like, <laughs> this should have been Kansas a bunch was keen. of They were ready for it. He just dropped it. And when Vioy can't run the ball... Drop and, and make BYU throw it? Yes. So beg, I, I would beg BYU to run right now. I would drop eight every time and say, go ahead and run against three-man front. Well, what have they done, <laughs> speaking of BYU, to give defenses any sort of other idea than to prevent that or yeah. present that front? Yeah, I got to get it going. Or uh, maybe you switch it up. Maybe you go old-school BYU pass-heavy and you run occasion. So here's the thing. Even with the second defensive touchdown, BYU's down by four – and just couldn't seem to generate the juice. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you sustain two touchdowns by a defense, it's hard to get yourself right mentally. Like, okay, we're okay. But Especially on defense where it's like, oh. To, to Keaton Slovis' credit, he comes out and throws a bomb down the sideline. He was right dropping throw. dimes. Keaton Marion, 37 red yards as well. And Chase so good. Roberts, right? Like, he threw some beautiful passes. Yes. So it's very – it's really frustrating – that BYU didn't have enough juice to, like, get it going, right? Someone calling you right now? I don't think so. I think Siri's <laughs> turned on music for some reason. Siri's <laughs> like, this conversation's boring. Did, this start, did you start playing a song? It, it, Siri turned on my music. I don't what, know. What song was it? I don't, it's some, something by YFN Lucci. I have never, <laughs> I have never heard. This is the anthem <laughs> we marched to Friday against Cincinnati. <laughs> But there just, was, there just wasn't enough juice to get back yeah. going. Well, the, the phone tried. Down by yeah. eight, BYU's driving. And we're thinking maybe they're going to go in and score and go for two and tie this game up, right? Yeah. And then gets the fourth down. There's a miscommunication on the pass play. And Keaton Slovis throws the second interception of the game. And it kind of felt like, Which all right, is like a punt anyway. BYU's to, yeah. cooked at that point. But it, but it's one score. Take, away one, never, take you, away one of those defensive touchdowns, and we're having an entirely different conversation. Totally. But, Spence, I'm saying in spite of those two and even three interceptions, BYU still had a chance to win this game. BYU lost this game. Kansas did a nice job of picking off those passes. There's a couple of lucky bounces there. The Parker Kingston play is completely Kansas. They did that. Not the pick six, though. That is just absolutely lucky. 
And then the interception from Keaton Slovis is on Keaton. Like, he throws it, uh, you know, short of where the receiver's going uh, down the sideline. BYU could have won this game. Offensive success rate, 26%. That's just terrible. Average third down distance was 9.2 BYU. How do you overcome Only had that? one completion on third and nine plus. But also, why are you getting to third and nine? Because you can't run the ball. BYU probably has to adjust its offensive philosophy in some way to account for the lack of a run game. Now, if you said, well, it's time to mix up who's playing on the offensive line. That happened because of injury. Waylon Lapuahu out at left guard. Ian Fitzgerald in. Kingsley Suamatia out at left tackle, injured for a portion of the game, came back in. Braden Kime at left tackle. They played two different dudes. It didn't help. This screen was meant to go to Keelan Marion. Mason Fakahua turns around and says, well, I'll just catch it. BYU's offense certainly has uh, potential to be incredible in the pass game. Right now it is really tough in the run game. I still believe BYU can fire that up at some point. I don't know why. It's probably irrational. Yeah, yeah. Because how, it's how been is the games. question? How? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, we'll ask Trevor Maddich. Like, is it fixable? Yeah. Can it be fixed? And I'll ask and again, Aaron Roderick, Aaron that Roderick today later. on Coordinator's Corner. Yeah, what? What do you, also, what do you have to do? Oh, okay, a couple quick observations. There were no fakes in this game. <laughs> Maybe it was needed. Who knows? And then the other, illegal touching. Four games in a row. What are we doing? What's going on there? Are the Big 12 refs enforcing this at a level that we have never seen? Like, I, I tend to think that this is a controllable element because you can check with the official. Are they looking Ask at it more aggressively? Ask Aaron that as well if you weren't already. I bet you are. Is, there were is, screenshots sent out, and it didn't look like he was covering up Keelan Marion's Keelan the, Marion. Uh, it, Keelan Marion's on the top. I thought it was a half yard off. But ultimately, it's not where you think you are. You, ch you check with the ref is my understanding. Yeah. You say, I am on, right? Or, or I'm off. We good? And he'll Well, you and the officials and are going to know that signal. BYU has struggled with this, so they're going to be looking for that. They're watching game tape of BYU. They're like, this is an illegal touch. BYU lead. I can, I can say this definitively without looking up. BYU leads the country in illegal touching. So, which is not a stat that we wanted. Insert honor code joke here. But, like, yeah, what is going on? I, yet, yeah, despite all of this, if BYU beats Cincinnati on Friday. 4-1. Four 4-1. Four four and one, which is better than we could have hoped for. I, I think we were hoping for 3-2. and two. Didn't we all say before the season began? If BYU is 4-1 and one coming out of the first five going to the bye week, I'll take it right now. It's just a bummer because you left a dub in Lawrence. Like, that's, that's a game that I would like yes. to play 10 times yes. and see. I, I believe that's probably a 50-50 proposition. But on that Saturday, unfortunately, BYU turned it over thrice and D led to two touchdowns. Is that French? I said two? this after the game to several people. I don't feel like Kansas was so good that BYU couldn't handle them, and that Kansas just straight up beat BYU. Agreed. I feel like Agreed. BYU, in many ways, beat BYU. Amen. And that is hard to stomach. Yes, it is. That is very hard to stomach because, like, when you can control a couple of things that you just gave away or made mistakes on, and, and they're so – not all turnovers are created equally. These were devastating turnovers. Oh, yeah, fatal. Devin just – absolute punches to the throat. You still could have won the game. <laughs> You're still in the game. Still could have won. <laughs> Kansas is a good team. Kansas is not as good as I thought they were. Kansas is a good team. And we let them off the hook? They're not ah. as good. They're not as good as I thought they were. But BYU beat BYU in several ways, and that is hard to stomach. And that's what Keaton Slova said after the game. Yeah. He's like, we, we know we left a win on the field. We that. had plenty of opportunity. We were in great position at halftime to go and win this game. And we left it on the field. This is in spite of stinking up the joint running the ball. Yep. And three turnovers. Yes. Two of which were touchdowns. How close if they are. If BYU is can run the ball a little bit, take I'm okay with one uh, you know, giveaway. Where's the takeaway? There was yeah. no takeaway. So that that minus three, you ain't gonna win. It's rare you win that game. Okay, now, before we get to your Monday mailbag, let's listen to Kalani Satake talk about the running game struggles. Yeah, if I had the answer for that, I would tell you guys. Maybe you guys can let me know. But uh, it, it, it's probably a combination of just getting the guys' confidence back. And then, you know, I, I think a lot of teams are trying to take the run away from us, which is fine. If they do that, we got to make them pay, and that's, that's throw the ball in the air. And, and when you throw the ball in the air, you got to take care of the football. You can't. You can't. Uh, throw interceptions and, and can't take sacks. And I thought Kansas game, game plan was to take the run away, and they, they did that, and then uh, try to make big plays on, on defense with sacks and interceptions. 
Well, now the challenge for BYU is, can you get right mentally and come back home as a two-point favorite, by the way, two-point favorite at home against Cincinnati and get the first Big 12 win and get to four and one? Yeah, how quickly can you move past the frustration that you left in Lawrence? Let's go now to our Monday mailbag where you ask questions. We answer them on the show. Here comes Porter Larson What's on up Facebook. What's up with the run game? All right, Porter, with the run game struggles, yeah. is it time to return to the offense of the 1980s and 1990s where BYU passes the football all the time with limited runs? Maybe. Uh, it, it's been so bad through four games, and it's not just you know the, the two games that you should run the ball well in the first two. It's the last two that I, I think it should be considered. Now, I'm not, I'm not one to just, like, drastically change something suddenly, but because it's been four games and you've been pushing, 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 and you had a different bit of a lineup for a minute that didn't give it, um, you know, a, a difference there. BYU is playing from behind for a lot of the second half. That sort of affects your play calling. What is Kansas? To, I'd, I can't wait to hear from Aaron Roderick because Aaron may say, no, they were giving us the pass. That was, that's what we were taking. But I'd still like when BYU runs for it to be way more effective. Yes. Don't look at the nine yards. L look at the 44 gained on 16 carries besides Parker Kingston and Sack. Sack adjusted was yes. 1.8. Slovis still bad. Lost 24 yards in sacks. Yes. Um, and then the Parker Kingston you mentioned, the 11 yards because of the yes. fumble recovery. Yes. So, th th again, don't look at the nine, although that's the number. But I don't know if you completely abandoned it and you're just like, yep, we're going to check it. 40 to 50 times a game. I don't know. BYU had enough plays and opportunities in this game to, to win it. But obviously, if you take care of the – the number one thing Aaron Roderick's going to say is, if we take care of the ball, I yes. feel like we're going to win the game. And, and that's totally true. So, to me, it's, it's in spite of the rushing issues, if you take care of the ball, you might be 4-0. Yes. So, that's number one is ball security. Jason Baller on Facebook says, three turnovers, ouch. Yep. Would BYU have won the game with even one – less turnover I tend to think that if you take one of the defensive touchdowns away yes then BYU probably wins the game probably we'll see maybe it comes down to the wire BYU's got to make a play there but remember BYU was on skates couldn't stop the run in the second half especially yeah, 6.9 yards per carry so it wasn't just the the fatal giveaways it was BYU's inability to stop Hyshaw Neal and Dan was running the ball I, and again I, I said this after the game I credit BYU for bouncing back after that Awful start. Uh, are, Terrible start. Are you talking about Arkansas or Kansas? Both it, games. It's both, right? Like are, because BYU was resilient. This team yeah. seems built to handle adversity, and they don't get... I would like them to avoid said... Uni sure. Uh, diver <laughs> adversity. Uh, adversity, university, all of it. Uh, get it done. Where why BYU be on the front foot, as they say in soccer yeah. and rugby. Like, get on the front foot, have the lead, play with the lead, don't give it up. Like, if you do, whatever... But BYU has done a nice job of, of competing. BYU competed, but when you talk about at Kansas, that's a game where I'm like, this is 50-50. BYU's not going to get blown out. I didn't see it, uh, an 11-point loss coming in this Especially one. not when BYU led by three at halftime. Yeah. But it is what it is. Yeah. That's how it shakes out. The, the only game where I would go double-digit loss, not as competitive at Texas is the only game I sit there and go, okay. Oklahoma at home, I'm like, compete. Cincinnati did. 20 to 6. Yep, prepare yourself. 14. But Cincinnati compete. has a better defense than Kansas, by the way. Cincinnati's defense that, is much better that, than Kansas's defense. That D-line, dude. Just just get ready. The Godfather. Dante like, if you Corleone. think the run game was tough against Arkansas you, you're about and to throw, Kansas. You're only about to throw 50 times again. <laughs> Cincinnati's defensive line is really good. Their defense overall is better than yeah. what BYU saw against Kansas. Yeah. Need some Lavelle Edwards Stadium magic. Hashtag BYUSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram. Lot to discuss. Uh, one Spencer Linton will ask the questions. Some easy, some tough. With uh, Aaron Roderick and Jay Hill, 2 Eastern on the BYU TV app. Can't wait for that one. The, hey, the set's all ready for you, Spence. Look Let's go. It. Looks good. I'm ready. You think there's drink in that JCW cup? I wish there were. <laughs> <laughs> I could go for a JCW shake, too. Absolutely. <laughs> Still on the way. Well, I was getting ready for Coordinator's Corner. Jeremy was busy talking one-on-one -on -one with ESPN's Trevor Maddich. On a Maddich Monday, does he think BYU can salvage the run game mm. at this point? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event.
Cougar Feast is the official feast of BYU Athletics. Pre-cooked meats, sides, and appetizers delivered to your door. Simply reheat and feast. 10% of all proceeds are donated to Full of Hope, a charity passionate about feeding hungry families in need. On game day. On game day. On game day. On game day. Feast like a cougar. Go to cougarfeast.com to feast like a cougar this football season. You're doing it. You got this. Yes, this is great. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. You're not ready for a BYU football game without BYU Sports Nation Game Day on BYU TV. Join in the excitement two hours before kickoff in Cougar Canyon. The cast and crew are locked and loaded to pregame every matchup this season. Join in the experience for each home game just outside the stadium. There's nothing like the tradition, spirit, and fun that connect Cougar fans everywhere. Join in person on BYU TV or on the free app. Could not throw that ball any better than when Keaton Slovis just threw that. Slovis in the end zone. Touchdown, Cougars! Oh, for what it's worth, BYU's passing attack was explosive in several moments yeah. during Saturday's game in Lawrence, Kansas. But obviously, not enough. We're 357. Alive. Yeah, that's great. It's a great number. And, and some of that's your plan from behind and whatnot, but... If you said, would you take 357 or not? I will always take that. Yes. I will always take Just give me more than nine yards rushing. We are live in Studio B. This I is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. <laughs> -play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. It's time for another Maddich Monday. Yeah, so uh, talked to Trevor earlier this morning, and obviously a lot of questions. What happened? The takeaways, the lack of uh, – or, or the giveaways, the lack of takeaways. The run game for an offensive lineman is a big question. 3-1 could be 4-1. Lots to discuss, and I did so with Trevor Maddich earlier this morning. All right, Trevor, a lot to digest from BYU's loss at Kansas. Obviously, three turnovers, two of which led directly to touchdowns on those plays stick out. Uh, but it seemed like BYU could have still overcome those and won the game. What did you see? Yeah, this, this felt bad, didn't it? Because it felt like an opportunity missed that they could have won this game, maybe should have won this game. And so... The fact that they lost it feels kind of ugly. But I think there are a lot of silver linings here. And one of them is that after, after an incredibly physical game at Arkansas, they went to Kansas, one of the better teams in the Big 12, and literally played them to a standstill, but for those two plays that you mentioned. I mean, a fumble return for a touchdown, an interception return for a touchdown. Neither one was an awesome play by the defense, necessarily even though the defense did well on both of those plays, both of them I thought were offensive mistakes more than defensive great plays. And other than those two plays, they played them literally to a standstill. And I think there's a lot of positive to be learned from how they did it. One of the positives that Keaton Slovis kept BYU in that game. BYU was still going down and scoring on offense. Obviously having, uh, you know, the, the interception was uh, a weird bounce off of Isaac Rex and another Kansas player, and then another guy picks it off. That's not on Keaton per se. Parker Kingston on that fumble, that was a, just a good clean hit. I know a lot of people thought that was targeting. It did not check the boxes of targeting. Uh, Parker Kingston not available after that. I, I wonder if the defense maybe had to lift the offense a little bit uh, more in this one and get uh, a third down stop. Uh, they only had one in the second half. Create a, a turnover or something that maybe would have aided BYU a little bit in this game. The defense did it in the first half. I mean, BYU was leading at halftime, even though they fell behind 7 nothing on the second play of the game because of that Parker Kingston fumble, scoop, and score. And, and 
And he's just a freshman. He's doing the best he can. Bless his heart. I don't want to rain on him, but just as an analysis standpoint, he didn't look to me like he was protecting his body or the football on that play. And so he was exposed to the to the effects of such a big clean hit because you know he wasn't he wasn't leading with his pads and he wasn't protecting the ball, squeezing that ball with two hands the way he needed to. He was leading with his sternum. And that's part of the problem with that. And yet the the defense rose up in the first half. The offense came back in the first half. And I thought they showed tremendous resilience. Now in the second half, when the defense started to get, you know, let the run game of Kansas get away from them. Uh, that's not to be unex uh, unexpected just because of the nature of the physicality of the game they played the week before against Arkansas. And in the first half, BYU's defense did just fine. But this is a defensive front that's known for, for depth that's a work in progress. And last week, not to take anything away from Kansas, but last week Kansas didn't play an SEC team. They played Nevada, no disrespect to the Wolfpack. And so I thought, I thought BYU held on as best they could uh, from a defensive standpoint. And really it was the passing game on offense that kept them in this thing through all the problems. And that was absolutely stellar. So let's talk about that because the way that BYU is passing the ball is really efficient and effective right now. Um, unfortunately, BYU is not running the ball. They're not running the ball. And, um, you know, teams are loading the box, stop the run. They're making BYU pass. It, it, it would seem I can't give a specific number on what percentage that is right now. But BYU's ineffectiveness in rushing the ball is encapsulated in this Cougar Stats uh, tweet a moment ago. Removing the 45-yard touchdown run by L.J. Martin against Arkansas, BYU has run 52 times for 41 yards the past two games. You've talked about the offensive line. You've been fired up. What, what is going on there, and is it fixable? I don't think it's fixable this year. Uh, I, and I don't, I, I, I don't think it's fixable. I mean, mm. they, they've had enough reps. They've had enough games to show that they at least are, are – they know how to do it. And in watching them on tape, it just doesn't look like they know how to run block. It just – that's the way it looks. Uh, it's, it's hard for me to say that, but the tape is the tape. Show me, show me where I'm wrong. And so that means they need to go to plan B and plan B is to throw the ball. If I'm on defense, I don't know why you stack the line against the run. Why would you, you know, you, they're, they're not pushing anybody anywhere anyhow. And yet knowing that BYU has to pass the pass protection has been good enough for Keaton Slovis and those receivers to get better and better every week and to keep them in this game at Kansas. But the, the, the running attack, I mean, you, you give those numbers, right? What that means is that BYU is averaging two per carry. Not two yards, which would be bad. Two feet per carry. Nevada last week against Kansas averaged four yards per carry. So uh, it's it's just where they stand now, I think, is where they need to accept. Not from a standpoint of we accept that we can't run block and therefore we quit. They still have to try. They still have to try to get better. They still have to try to run block. They still need to find an answer. They need to seek it. But they also at some point need to say, okay, we're not going to win the ball running the game until we or win the game running the ball until we do. So the passing game needs to step up for that. That means that not just throw the deep passes down the field, but also be more creative with short passes in lieu of running plays. That means pick plays and crosses. There's a lot of air raid principles that they could use more of. For example, when you've got two wide receivers and they run up about three or four yards, and then they cross to create a traffic jam against man coverage and get one of them open that way. And if it's zone, then as they run across, then sit down between the zones at some point and gain four yards, which normally would have been the running play that now is getting them an average of about two feet, which isn't getting it done. So I'm not saying just surrender the run, but I am saying that they did a very good job against Kansas of using the passing attack to compensate for a lack of a run. And they'll need to do that even better going forward until the run materializes from the depths of the abyss. And it's deep. We're talking to ESPN's Trevor Maddich on BYU Sports Nation. Blaine Fowler said as much on the postgame show Saturday. He said, listen, this is essentially, he didn't say this, but I knew this is what he was saying. When I played, when you played, Trevor, you're a teammate of Blaine's, you guys ran the ball, but it wasn't, uh, you know, the way that BYU has run the ball the last 10 or 20 years. It was uh, air raid principles, as you mentioned. And so we'll see if BYU kind of shifts to that or if they continue to pound the rock because in comes Cincinnati on Friday, uh, a team that's 36th in the country at 108 yards per game rushing. If BYU got 108, I think we'd feel pretty good. That's not actually a great number. But uh, in come the Bearcats, who uh, 
uh, you know, played a, a two-score game with Oklahoma, held them to 20 after they, they had been averaging 55. What do you make of Friday night on a short week ahead of General Conference, that matchup in Provo? <laughs> This is a this is a tough one for BYU because it's the the third consecutive physical game. I mean, Cincinnati's defense held Oklahoma to just two offensive touchdowns, two offensive touchdowns, and this is an Oklahoma offense that has been lighting up the scoreboard all season long. So BYU will have their work cut out for them on offense. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, Emory Jones, I'm assuming that he's healthy coming into this week, is a big physical quarterback along the lines of Arkansas's KJ Jefferson. And so it's another physical game that they'll have to play. And they'll have to compensate for wearing down on the defensive front in the second half, potentially. And they'll have to figure out how to get them off the field better than they figured out how to get Kansas off the field. That may mean take more risks. That may mean, you know, blitz more and hope those guys on the back end can hold up in coverage. But whatever they do, they're going to have to figure out a way to get some stops. I don't care about yards given up by the Cougar defense. I do care about stops. So if you think bend but don't break, that's kind of where they'll be, especially in the second half. Offensively, though, you know, Cincinnati did a really good job of limiting Oklahoma's offense. So the Cougars will have to learn from how they did it and they'll have to figure out ways to use the passing game to compensate for it. Once again, I'm looking for more air raid principles with more rub routes, more crossing routes, more things that – more creative screen passes, things that are you can use instead of the run. Then try to run, but don't bang your head against the wall too much if it uh, is not working. And it has not quite yet. When will it work is the question. At this point, BYU's 3-1 and one have been, uh, you know, a kind of unexpected road win at Arkansas. Certainly at Kansas, that was kind of a 50-50-ish game. And in comes Cincinnati. Trevor, if BYU beat Cincinnati, they're 4-1 and one going into the bye week with a really tough October. I think we would have taken 3-2, and two, but certainly BYU needs to take care of business at home to up its chances of making a bowl, if not 7-8 or whatever wins. How are you feeling about the Cougars at this point and the chance to be 4 and 1 going into the bye week? You know, I feel I feel good. I feel good. You could see a path to getting there. You can see things that they're doing well that they're getting better at every week and keep in mind that this defense assuming that it stays relatively healthy and they had some injuries on both sides of the ball in that Kansas game. But if they can stay relatively healthy, every week they should be better because every week they'll have a better feel for their assignments and their adjustments in this new offense of, of Coach Jay Hill. And they'll be able to play faster. They'll be able to play more instinctively, and they're already doing it fairly well. But they'll get better and better because this is their first month in a brand-new defense, so that's good. The passing game looks like it's getting much, much better. So, you know, BYU does have tools that they can bring to bear in this game against Cincinnati that'll give them a chance to win it. But just like the Kansas game, and we talked about this last week, the way BYU, the path for BYU to win this game is not to overpower Kansas. They don't, don't plan on that. The way for them to beat them is through greater discipline and execution. And there, was, there were mistakes in execution that hurt BYU against Kansas. If they can clean that up and beat the Bearcats in those two areas, the Cougars have a chance. Four and one would be awfully nice to end September. Trevor, we appreciate the time. Best of luck on everything you're doing on ESPN this week. Thanks. Trevor Maddox of ESPN back for another Maddox Monday, and he did not hold back once again. At this point, he says he doesn't feel like the run game can be fixed. Like, it is the challenge now of Aaron they Roderick and the offensive staff, Daryl Funk specifically on that offensive line, to try and figure something out. But – he feels like there's enough tape out there that he doesn't know that there could be any sort of overhaul at this point. Does the staff feel the same way? And if so, what do they do? That's, that's the question. And the, the past game has shown that it can carry this team a long way, but I don't believe that BYU can be very successful if they can't run the ball at least minimally. Right now it's below minimally. Minimally to me is like 100 yards. BYU's, BYU's run the ball for over 100 yards one time, and it was against Sam Houston. Bioi gained 44 yards on, on Saturday. That's tough. Cincinnati comes in with, the, as I mentioned, the, the number 36 rush defense in the country. So work's cut out for BYU. And uh, wow. AF, AFR is going to give us some details as well, break down what's going on with BYU football. The X's and O's on Tuesday night. you got Coordinator's Corner here straight from the coordinators. Blaine and David will break it down with Dave coming up tomorrow at 7 Eastern on F for the review as well on the BYU TV app.
Up next, would a matchup with Colorado and Coach Prime be enough or worth another trip to Shreveport, Louisiana? <laughs> this is BYU Sports Nation. What's the power of Prime? BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Cougar Feast is the official feast of BYU Athletics. Pre-cooked meats, sides, and appetizers delivered to your door. Simply reheat and feast. 10% of all proceeds are donated to Full of Hope, a charity passionate about feeding hungry families in need. On game day. On game day. On game day. On game day. Feast like a cougar. Go to cougarfeast.com to feast like a cougar this football season. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history. There is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Everyone loves going to the dentist, right? When was the last time you had your teeth cleaned? Heart disease, Alzheimer's, stroke, dementia, and other inflammatory health conditions can be linked to periodontitis, a severe stage of gum disease. To help fight against gum disease, have your teeth cleaned regularly by a dentist or hygienist. To review the science behind these findings, go to visityourdentist.org. Dental cleanings are essential for your health. This message is brought to you by the eAssist Dental Health Education Foundation. Make sure you follow BYU Sports Station for the latest and greatest on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer. He is Jeremy. We are Swifties. Okay, not really. What? But we would both go to the concert if we had the Are you going to go to the movie? Because they, they recorded the concert. It's going to be in movie theaters. I'm thinking about it, but it's three hours long. Three-hour movie of Taylor Swift. A three-hour <laughs> tour. I'm not sure if I'm going to be there, man. I, I need some more time Maybe. to think about that. While we do think about that, let's roll out today's headlines. This just in, BYU football loses at Kansas, 38-27, first loss of the year. The quest for perfection is over. What? The Cougars threw for 357, two touchdowns, but a scoop and score and a pick six for Kansas were a big difference. Klein Stake discussed how the Cougars can get better. Uh, I know that we have a, a good team. I know that we haven't played our best yet. I'm looking forward to doing that next week. We definitely didn't play our best to today, and, and um, you can either sulk about it or complain or just get better. And that I choose to get, get this team better for next week. That's what I'm going to say to my kids when we talk about the uh, chores at home. Just get better this week. Let's go. Up next for BYU, the Big 12 home opener against Cincinnati Friday at 8 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Did you say it on Senate? We're on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Indeed. <laughs> yes, we Thank are. Thank you, Bill Belichick. Yep. Cougars in the NFL. Speaking of part one, Bill Belichick's Good friends. Andy Reid moves up to number four on the all-time wins list in NFL history. Outstanding. 271st win yesterday, moving past Tom Landry wow. following a Chiefs 41-10 drubbing of the Chicago Bears. Zach Wilson and the Jets lost to the Patriots for a 15th straight time. <sighs> Wilson, 18 for 36, 157 yards passing in the 15 to 10 loss. Tyler Algier, seven rushes for 12 yards, two catches, 17 yards in the Falcons' first loss of the season to Detroit. Chris Brooks, nine carries for 66 hey. yards. Hey! He got in because the Dolphins blew yeah. this game wide open. That 52 yard run was awesome, man. 70 to 20 over the Broncos. 70 points. Taysom Hill, four rushes for 12 yards, a catch for nine yards in the Saints. 18-17 loss to Green Bay. Cougs in the NFL Part 2. Michael Davis, eight tackles, pass breakup, and a 28-24 win over the Vikes. 
Sione Taki Taki. Uh, yeah, don't go for it at your own like 24. Sione Taki Taki one tack one of 27 3 win over the Titans. Puka Nakua and the Rams play the Bengals. Monday Night Football tonight. Doubleheader. Puka listed as questionable for the game, but is expected to play. Uh, so it's a positive question. Mm -hmm. Jamal Williams placed on the injured reserve by the Saints with a hamstring injury, meaning he will be out for at least four games. We wish a speedy recovery to Jay Swag Daddy. Number six, BYU women's soccer with probably their toughest test to date. Okay. At number 14, More than Texas. UCLA? Maybe. Where is UCLA? I don't know. That was at home. This is a road challenge against the 14th ranked team in conference. Okay. They're in Austin. 8 Eastern on the Longhorn Network. Number 10, BYU Women's Volleyball sweeps number 18. Baylor led by Whitney Bauer, who recorded her 4,000th career assist, including this beauty after some great defense for the Cougs. Catches to Costa. Simpson blocked. Check. Still alive. Check. Takes some off it. One-handed set, Lee got the touchdown. down! What a set by Whitney Bauer, what great defense by BYU to keep that alive. And this crowd loves a good rally and good defense. Yes, they do. Up next, huge road test at number nine, Texas, Thursday on FS1, Friday as well on the Longhorn Network. By the way, the NCAA uh, Division I Volleyball Committee revealed its first in-season top ten yesterday. BYU number eight, Texas nine. So a top 10 matchup Ooh. in the committee and the ABCA waiting for the updated rankings coming up. Okay. Uh, huge Thursday and Friday. Let's go. Sixth ranked women's cross country wins the Dellinger Invitational in Oregon, led by top 10 finishes from Lexi Halliday Lowry, Aubrey Frenthaway, who had the BOA Sports Nation Karma, and Jenna Hutchins. The third ranked men's cross country team took second in the Virginia Invitational, Joey Noakes leading the Cougars with a fourth place individual finish. Jim Fredette's Miami 3-on-3 three -three team won its first Masters event of the season in Cebu, Philippines. Mm -hmm. Jimmer hit the game winner in the championship game. Congratulations. BYU men's golf competing at the WH Tucker Intercollegiate in Albuquerque, New Mexico starting today. That tournament runs through tomorrow. And the men's tennis team won 12 matches over the weekend at the ITA Bedford Bedford Cup in the mountains. Held it there. It's good to know they were in the mountains. Those are today's headlines. <laughs> Now we offer some opinions in the whip. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marist, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Shout out Marist for giving 700K the next four years or something to women's volleyball. Let's go, Marist. Amazing. Casey and Angela Adams. In one of the latest bowl projections for Brigham Young University, ESPN's Kyle Bonagura has BYU facing Coach Prime in Colorado in the Independence Bowl in Shreveport. Would this matchup be worth another trip to Shreveport, Louisiana? There are very few things, Jerem, <laughs> that would entice me to ever go back to Shreveport. This is one of them. Really? This would be a fascinating bowl game buildup. It'd be a little bit of a circus, but it would be a lot of fun. It would be difficult for Prime to find something to be mad at BYU for. Like, because he takes, not gonna it, give it to he him. takes an angle. BYU won't give no. it to him. No, eh, they're playing next year, uh, I would imagine. And maybe even in Provo. So, no. No, they're playing next year. So you don't you don't like it? I believe they will play next year. Okay. So no, I don't care. All right. The Dolphins scored 70 points, as we just mentioned, in a dominant win at Denver yesterday. Had a chance to break the all-time scoring record by kicking a field goal in the final minute of the game, but instead took a knee and turned the ball over on downs. Yeah. Should Miami have kicked the field goal? No, they had already come. <laughs> it's okay. No. At that point, if, if you, you want to create field goal enemies, at that point, no. Every team will will absolutely headhunt you if you do something like that. Oh, in interesting you'd say that, playing the oh Broncos with a certain head coach over there. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> like, you become the enemy of every team in the NFL because they're just like... You already oh, are because you just jerks. put up 70. They're like, whoa. Women's soccer at number 14 Texas tonight. Is this a must win for BYU's Big 12 title hopes? No, but it feels like it. It feels it because it's so early. It's so early in the season still that like BYU could lose this game and then win out and be in position to potentially win the Texas conference. No That's way. the thing. That's the thing. Soccer, you're going to have a tie in there somewhere. So, no, it's it's not technically a must win, but it feels like it. It feels like BYU needs at least a draw here to feel like we're in good position to win the conference. If we feel like BYU's top four good and number one win seed the match. Good, they better win the match. 